Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found and, of course, taped live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Uh, real quick request for the people listening to us in the audio realm. If you, you got your little phone and you got your Spotify or Apple podcast, really, I'm talking to the Apple podcast people. Leave us a rating or review. If it's not too much of a bother, it's a great, free, and easy way to help support going in raw. We want to try to rise up the rankings. So hit that subscribe button. Leave us a rating or a review and a comment, whatever it is. And uh, that goes a long way towards helping going in raw. With that being said, we had a fun episode of AEW t- uh, Dynamite tonight. It was the Dynamite after WrestleMania, and man... They really brought their A game. Larson trying to yeah. get back some of the buzz from WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. And most certainly FTR and the Young Bucks put on their A game. Uh, another stellar bout between the two, uh, 18 months after their first highly anticipated match. Um, FTR's had themselves quite a last, I don't know what, set five days. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. An awesome Super card of honor. Yeah. Match of the year candidate against the Briscoes. Mm. And another stupendous. Yeah, match hey. against the Young Bucks. Yo. Um, no. We were talking about in the in the in our kickoff show. You know, I don't I don't remember everything about their initial match against the Young Bucks, but uh, from what I do remember, I like this one was focused more on story and not so much as like a highlight of everything about tag team wrestling, which was fun. Have them doing other teams' moves and stuff that was a lot of fun. This one seemed focused, personal. Um, the crowd was eaten up. Uh, face FTR mm-hmm. and they perform their part masterfully in this whole thing yeah, um, yeah. I mean in, in some ways it reminds me this, this is probably a pretty crap analogy and a very loose one uh, yep. John Gargano's John and Adam Cole's first takeover match the two out of three falls where Gargano's being get hit by a bus and kicking out of everything yeah. Yeah. really good but at moments like really over the top yeah, you know sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be the Young Bucks and FTR's first match. The second match between Cole and Gargano was much more grounded, I felt like. Yeah. Which is one reason I liked it more. This match tonight had more of that kind of feel. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I thought, you know, I, I know a lot of people really love the the first match between them, and it, it's a good match, and I like it's really good. Yeah. I like that they had a very specific reason or very specific goal in mind. It's a, even, I think the FTR said, this is going to be a love letter to tag yeah. team wrestling. Yeah. And that's what they did. But it's sort of it to me that match sort of took me a- away from their rivalry. You know, I was like, okay, they're doing this very specific thing, and yes, it's fun to see them uh, shout out and you get all the Easter eggs of like you know you had Harlem Heat in there, you had probably the Steiners in there, you had all the great tag teams, right? Legion of Doom, um, or Road Warriors, whatever. Uh, this, you're right. It it was more grounded in an actual story between the two teams as opposed to trying to accomplish some other goal. Um, which just felt a bit more gimmicky. Uh, this was a terrific, terrific match. Uh, like you said, FTR have had a killer week. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, I thought this was terrific. They're now, I mean, what are they, in terms of the rankings, are they at the top of the rankings? Yeah, right now? I said tonight when they made their entrance, they had number one by their name. Um, okay. So I believe they're tops in the AEW power rankings, of course. They're Ring of Honor and AAA tag team champs. I mean, are they going to do their own belt collector thing with uh, with FTR? I think, I mean, you got to figure at this point it's more likely than not, right? I mean, look, they're good guys. Of course, Jurassic Express are good guys. That does not mean at all that uh, that you can't have a good guy versus good guy thing. It's mm-hmm. AW. They do all sorts of cool stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that that's a, that's a likely situation, of course, coming up. When, so uh, tonight, Jurassic Express challenged um, uh, or Red Dragon. Yeah, to match next uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Yeah. So uh, I mean, yeah, you got to figure unless boy, they can have Red Dragon be transitional champions. No, 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 no. I don't. I'd I be kind of surprised if AEW did that. I mean, they do that with the TNT title because that's who cares. But like the tag titles, they really hold in high esteem. I don't think that they would do that with Redragon, but it's possible. I mean, those guys are bad guys and got FTR. Um, that's a possibility. Yeah, it's, it's a possibility. It's another dream match there too. Redragon versus FTR. 
did they ever mix it up? I guess they, they were already gone. FTR was already gone from uh, NXT by the time mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Colin, uh, little, 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 O'Reilly and Fish got there, huh? Mm -hmm. Boy, that'd be something else. Ooh, man. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Uh, earlier today on our uh, NXT recap episode of Going In Raw, we talked about a couple other things. Seth Rollins uh, saying he doesn't like three-hour Raws, uh, the situation with Nash, Nash Carter being released from WWE, and, of course, the potential, the reporting that Walter, Walter, Gunther, the ring mm -hmm. general, mm -hmm. might be moving over to main roster, including a couple others. Uh, yep. Fightful Select has a couple other interesting names from NXT. We speculated on a couple of them in the episode earlier today. That's available right now yep. at our YouTube channel, of course, wherever audio podcasts uh, can be found. Samoa Joe also made his AEW Dynamite debut in the ring against Max Caster, uh, which is a pretty fun, relatively short match. There was a curiosity. I just want to get this out of the way. All right. Just want to get this out of the way. Where did the the butcher, Matt Jackson, and Samoa Joe all go today to be super sunburned? Yeah, I don't know. It, but they're in Boston. Yeah, but I looked at the temperature associate... for Boston. Oh, what was it? It ranged from forty six to forty eight. Yeah, I was going to say you don't normally uh, associate Boston in April with you know sunny beach weather. Not like, I, really. I don't know, they oh, take a day trip out to, to, to Cape Cod or something? Maybe? I don't know. Don't Wind know. burn? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know. This, this this might be a joke. Maybe not. Somebody mixed red paint in their spray tan? Patty said that one. That didn't make any sense. No, I don't know anything about sense. spray tan, man. I've never done one before. I've, I've sat in a either. tanning booth before once. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, long. Oh, it was, a, it was probably 2005 or so. Oh, all right. Uh, How'd that one work of our out for roommates, you? One of our roommates would do that, and she was like, come on, it's funny. And uh, I was like, okay, I'll go check it. I've never done it before. I don't know. I'm just sort of sitting there. and you. Did you feel like you got radio. superpowers after being blasted by uh, UV rays? Yeah, a little bit. I'll be honest really? with you. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, How long did that last? pretty cool. I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Then I had some Jack in the Box, and I felt sluggish. No, oh. superpowers were gone. It countered your powers. It I remember did, once I did. went to a a, a a concert in San Francisco, and it was a cloudy day. So I'm like, I'm, you oh, know. that's the worst. And I'm like, ah, oh, cloudy, no big oh, deal. No. And then my like literally all the skin on my nose. I'm not talking top layer. I'm talking skin. Mm -hmm. Or the next couple of days, just came off. Ah, oh, you molted. <laughs> yeah, I did. Again, I'm not talking top layer. I'm talking all of it. That's horrible. It was gross. Those those goddamn clouds, they'll get you, man. You'll be like, oh, everything's cool out here. It's kind of cool. And then it's just like, you, next day you're like, just it's just like this mass yeah, of red. I know. It's I horrible. Know. <laughs> you <laughs> molten. Anyways, yeah, snake sheds his skin. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. Oh man! Anyways, let's dive into this episode of sure, AEW. Of 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 but yeah, I just noticed they were like, like when Joe came out, I was like, "Man, I hope they're not going to do a lot of chops." Because yeah, I mean, he did. He did a lot. Of chops. He did, but Max didn't, and it was a fairly short match, and he won it with a muscle buster. It's great to see. Pops huge. Awesome I missed the muscle buster. What a great, That's move. A great move! It's what a great, great move. great move. But things kicked off with Adam Cole versus Christian Cage. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Christian got way too much of his own shit in for my money, uh, in, including eating a boom. Uh, granted, I know they're in kicking, kicking out of it. Uh, I know well, he two had things. The, the, there's two the things wrong pad. with that boom. Kept the knee pad up and he did it from the front. Yeah. Right. If he yeah. drops the knee pad, does it from behind. That's it. Bang. Boom, Done. Really? If yeah. he keeps the knee pad up from the front, that's just a shining wizard. It's like a plush pillow on his knee. And I, I like Excalibur has to explain it every time, too. This is like tw twice now that I get to I know. know, probably more. I know. He has to do uh, that sometimes. He has to do yeah, that. But no, this is a cool match. This is a fun match. Uh, after the match, uh, let's see here. Uh, for so the Cole win, wins uh, with Redragon. The, yeah, with the boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Redragon comes down to ringside. They start attacking uh, Christian. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus run down to make the save. Redragon brawl with them backstage. And then Cole's by himself in the ring. Adam Page's music hits. He comes out. Cole's like, whoa, shut that music off. Stop where you are. I'm not fighting you until you put that title on the line, Sonny Jim. He says, I just beat a legend. And then Page grabbed a mic from him, said, you want a title match? 
He says, after last week, you learned you can't just steal the title. I'll give you your match, and it's going to be your punishment. He says, next week, uh, I'll defend against you on Rampage because we're going to be in Texas, and it's going to be a Texas death match. I love this, Larson, because Hangman Adam Page is using the history of, of, of his title reign now against his opponents. Pretty clever. He had that amazing Texas death match with Lance Archer. Yeah, now yeah. he's like, hey, guess what I know what to do, and guess what you don't do? I'm yeah. going to do that to you. Yeah, Paige has absorbed Texas deathmatch powers, and now he can use those against Adam Cole. And somewhere down the line, if they're smart about this, they'll have him, uh, uh, I mean, not a title, but draw, but go really long against somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like he did with yeah. Daniel Bryan. Dude, it's just raw gate mutant. Yeah. Hangman yeah. Instead of Paige absorbing mutant. wrestlers, he's absorbing match types. Honestly, it's the kind of thing that pro wrestling should always do because it's realistic. It's like, hey, it I've learned from my past. Now I'm going to apply that exactly. to my future. As he becomes, have you noticed, though, like he's less on the defensive and he's more aggressive now. He's yeah. like, all these people are coming after me. Now I have to go yeah. on the offense. Now will that bite him in the ass Maybe somewhere down the line against like an MJF or something? Maybe. Maybe I like he got in the ring was like yelling at Adam Cole. It was great. And at the end, he said, yeah. if I were you, I get your affairs in order. Woo! Yeah, wow. Woo! That's a very 80s uh, TV drama thing to say. Get your affairs in order. Oh, it's great, though. It is really good stuff. He's going to bring really an attache good. case with him to the ring. Exactly. All right, let's take a break here to get a word in from our sponsor, BetterHelp. People don't always recognize the physical symptoms of stress. Headaches, teeth grinding, sleeping too much or too little, and digestive issues can all be indicators of stress. Yeah, and having dealt with anxiety for most of my adult life, I can definitely tell tales of many nights laying awake just stressing about a variety of things. But it's moments like that where you got to remind yourself that you got to take care of yourself and try to find someone to talk to. Having gone through that process, I know how difficult it can be to find a therapist you feel comfortable speaking with. But with BetterHelp, you get customized online therapy that makes that process much more convenient by offering video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. So give BetterHelp a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. Right now, BetterHelp is offering Going In Raw listeners 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash raw. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. And let's get a word from our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Let me ask you a question, Steve. Sure. Uh, say you go to a coffee shop or internet cafe and you ask some complete, just total stranger, to watch your computer while you go use the bathroom. And now, odds are this stranger isn't going to run off with your stuff, but at the same time, would you really want to risk leaving it unprotected? No, no, not my computer. No, God, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course not. Of course not. But that's basically what happens anytime you connect to an unencrypted network, whether it's on an airplane, in a hotel, in a cafe, or a coffee shop, where your data is not secured. Sure, your personal data might be fine, but any hacker on that same network could easily gain access to your passwords or financial details. But ExpressVPN creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet, so hackers can't steal your data. All you gotta do is fire up the app, click one button to connect, and you are protected. Plus, ExpressVPN works on all your devices, laptops, phones, and tablets, so you can stay protected while you're on the go. So secure your online data today at expressvpn.com slash G-I-R and get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash G-I-R. Expressvpn.com slash G-I-R. And before we get back to the show, let's get a word from our sponsor, Ray Con. So you know, Steve. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we may be uh, four months into 2022, but that doesn't mean we can't all shake things up. You know, maybe try out a new workout routine or travel someplace new. Whatever way you decide to make a change, there's no better way to do it than with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Yeah, whether you're going to a new gym or traveling to a new destination, Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you. And their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Yeah, they've got optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. Their earbuds fit so well they don't budge at all. Whether I'm out running, be doing some burpees, or just sitting here shaking my head. You want to see this? Watch. They're not going to move. Watch. Why, why would you do? Why they're would not you just moving, sit Steve. there shake? Stop shaking your I'm head. I'm showing why you. They're not moving. 
they're know they're clearly all. not moving, but I just don't know why you would. They're not moving. I'm just, to show you that they're not moving. And not only will they stay in your ears, but Raycons also give you the audio quality you need at half the price of other premium audio brands. And right now, Going In Raw listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash raw. That's buyraycon.com slash raw to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash raw. Uh, so we got a, a recap of what happened at uh, Supercard of Honor. Jay Lethal's heel turn and, of course, the debut of Samoa Joe, a re-debut of Samoa Joe in Ring of Honor. Then we got Samoa Joe versus Max Caster. So Max does his customary freestyle. He references Joe being in the extra division. Prone. He's injury prone. And then he said that uh, AEW beat NXT in the ratings while Joe was champion. However, timelines don't match up. You're going to actually this. I am, because NXT moved to Tuesdays, April 13th of 2021. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Joe wasn't champion until August 2021. Ooh. Yeah, but I think, you know, I'll, I'll take, you know, the side of Max Caster here. Maybe he's just thinking maybe backstage there was still like, hey, we ran these guys off Tuesday, and uh, but let's see if that's going to help them in this manufactured war between these two companies. And and maybe that's still the thing. Wednesday to Tuesday. That head to head, Wednesday to Tuesday, Larson. It's not head to head unless they're on the same night, same time, man. Come on. <laughs> Can I just point out I just noticed that somebody in the comments earlier today popped for your green marker <laughs> that you've got in your hand. The green right now. Crayola marker. So I, I I'm I'm an anxious person. I like having bits of business while I do the show. Hey, guess what? It curbs my anxiety. Tag me in, brother. <laughs> oh, look at that. What do you got there? Is that a dry erase marker? Oh, this, oh no. This is a crazy art one. <laughs> oh, wow. I got, you know, I got the name brand here. I have no idea why this is just sitting here. I think it's Olympic, too. I think it's dead. So, like, yeah, I, yeah, I, have, a, I have a couple. Of, like, I have a Sharpie up here. But this one's <laughs> out, of, out of ink. So, I need these for yeah. uh, when we do Smash Zone. We write our picks and stuff. I again, felt so dope said Steve's poor because <laughs> I got the crazy hard one. I got the 99 cent gimmick version. There you go. Uh, but it's just one of those things where he said that. I'm like, does that line up? I love it doesn't that. matter. I love, it doesn't matter at all. Checking. No, it's it doesn't awesome. matter. Look, man, here's the thing. People are like, oh, no, nothing will ever beat Max Caster calling out CM Punk for Z Pack and himself and pooping, into himself. pooping his pants. Yeah. No, until he's able to top that line, then there is no, oh, he burned this guy. Yeah, no. And like the idea, it's a sound idea. Joe took it all in stride. It's not a huge deal. I'm not trying to make a deal about it. This one, those No, I like, no, it's good, man. We don't get a lot right over here going in wrong. No, we don't. So it's nice to have a couple wins here and there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, this is a fun match. Uh, So we're at the bell. Caster gets in Joe's face. It seems like a bad idea. Starts poking him in the chest. Joe drops him with a headbutt. Boots him in the corner. Dances. And that was hits an awesome chop. dance. It was. Yeah, that was a great dancer. Um, so Joe pretty much got all his stuff in. Uh, Max got a couple uh, moves in after uh, 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 Bowens kind of helps distract Joe. In the end, though, Joe wins with the muscle buster. So then Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt show up on the Tron. I like they're carrying over stories from Ring of Honor now to AEW. I hope there yeah, is man. crossover. Yeah, dude, absolutely. And so Sanjay says, hey, Joe, we're not going to ruin your moment like you ruined ours last week. Mm-hmm. And then Jay starts talking about how he changed uh, their his outlook. He says, now I will do and I will say whatever I want. He says, for four months, I tried to call you, Joe, my mentor. Yeah. And you yeah. never picked up the phone. Well, I know you got a phone because you're, you're there right now because it seems like you only pick up the phone for billionaires. He says, that even upset me, though. What upsets me is that I didn't even know you were going to be there. I would have rolled out the red carpet for you. But you know what? Next week... We're going to give you a present that you'll never forget in New Orleans. What do you think that present's going to be? It's going to be someone that's going to try that's going to attack Samoa Joe for sure. Ooh. That'd be my mm. guess. Yeah, you're probably right. It's going to say beads. You get that during Mardi Gras. Uh, after that, we had a Blackpool Combat Club, the Clobbering Club interview. What was that? It's a motorcycle just went down It'd my street. It'd be nuts if like a motorcycle just came like through your wall right there. It'd be like a meatloaf video, huh? <laughs> <laughs> ah! You know what to do. So anyways, uh, what we got? A Rampage coming up. Brian versus Trent. Uh, Yuda versus Mox. Regal says, I'm off my nut. Because with it, because, because, 
because they're there. He says, Brian has to face Trent. Yuta has impressed me and Brian greatly. Now he's got to impress this man here and Jonathan Moxley. But I'm off my nut. <laughs> and uh, Mox says, yeah, yeah, that forecast of rampage, the sound of bones cracking like thunder and raining blood. I drink blood now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that, we got the chairman, Sean Spears, versus Captain Sean Dean. MJF, MJF comes out and joins the commentary. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just waiting for meatloaf to come crashing through my window right here. I apologize. No, I, I got the image in my head. <laughs> Gosh darn it. So anyways, uh, at one point, Spears throws Dean over the top rope. He goes ringside. And of course, they got all the Wardlow like, security posters ringside. But instead of just being 8 by 10 pieces of paper, they're like... 24 by like 36 11 by posters. 14 man those things are big yeah they're good Next, size so. they're gonna be like the one the one sheets after that i know and so uh spears wipes his boot on one of them um so then he connects with the pump handle neck breaker he covers dean but that pulls him up at two he's setting up for a, a c4 and then camera goes backstage and security is all laid out mm-hmm. and so this distracts spears he drops dean off his shoulders and we cut backstage again Warlow's back there destroying more security. He makes his way into the arena. He beats down some more security guards. Chucks one through the barricade to knock it over so he can get to the ringside area. Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally, like three really like super tall uh, security guards hold him back. And then Dean rolls up Spears to get the win. Uh, MJF comes out to try to console Spears, and Spears is just too upset. He kind of like brushes him off and leaves. Not happy about all that. No. Uh, Those three guys that, that held Wardlow back were massive, though. Yeah, those are big dudes. They were, big like, dudes. all at least as tall as Wardlow is. Going to be Ring of Honor champions come 2020. It's entirely possible. Uh, after that, I don't even know why these guys are still even talking. Wheeler Yuta clearly has moved on, and you just let him. Uh, so it's best friends, and Shivani's got the mic. Chuck cuts him off. Wheeler's U- Wheeler Yuta is there. He says, hey, man, we love Yuta. And you immediately see Trent go, Pff. Yeah. And he's like, come on, we helped train him. I, you've been staying on my couch. I literally bought you your tights. You could be the best wrestler, but why can't you do it with us? Ugh. And then Trent steps up, and he's like, I've never liked him. You're a scumbag and a traitor. If you want to learn, watch what I do to Brian on Rampage. What are you going to do, get your head knocked in there, Trent? Because that's, that's what's going to happen on Rampage. That's what's going to happen, I know. Big down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then they're in the picture in picture commercial. We have Sammy and Ty Conti doing the sign thing. Uh, then we go to earlier in the day. Uh, Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz. They're beating up Jericho Appreciation Society backstage. They uh, The JAS flee. And then while they're doing that, Kingston takes a TV and a good size mm-hmm. one at that. Probably 50 inches. This is like at least at least 50. I'd say it's probably 50. Yeah. And then chucks it at them. It hits like the door frame. Uh, JAS get into a SUV and speed off. Shout out to Eddie Kingston for the Kenny Powers jersey. You're fucking out. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Good stuff. Good stuff. Fantastic indeed. Yeah. So they come out, Eddie and Santana Ortiz, they come out to the ring to do a promo. Eddie calls Jericho a two faced coward, says, I'm going to attack you on sight. Even if it's in front of your wife and kids. Yeah, I like that he explains on site. Yeah. He says, you know what on site means? Even in front of your wife and kids, if you if the moment is there, I'm going to take it. On site. And he says, same goes for uh, 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 Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Ange. Yeah. They get the names right? Uh, yeah, something like that. He says, he says, Garcia, I know where you live, man. <laughs> oh, you better keep running. Oh man, on site. What would you? What are you gonna? What, what would you take out on site, Larson? Because like you put you put a box of donuts in front of me. I was on gonna site. say a loaf of banana Bang. bread on site. I think gone. <gasps> oh, banana bread on site. It'd be gone. It'd be gone. gone. So uh, Costco uh, hot dog on site. On gone. site. What about the churro? Long chicken too? sandwich on site. Gone. Churro. I'm less excited by. I All like right. a churro, but I'm not excited by it. Very well. Uh, Santana says the Jericho Bitch Society strikes again. Uh, they better bring the hardest fight because this is what they do. The Nortiz says, Jericho, you better stop running because uh, next week we're going to meet you in New Orleans. And Eddie says, they'll be in New Orleans next week and we're going to beat your ass. Junkyard dog and Butch Reed mm. style. That's good. That's good stuff. Fantastic reference. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, after that, we had Jade Cargill and Mark Sterling in an interview talking about Marina Shafir. 
and win number 30 for Jade Cargill. Now, Jade, Jade immediately, instead of waiting till the end of the interview, she says, Tony, first off, number one, number one, cut the shit. She says, I'm here to formally uh, uh, introduce the baddie section. She says, cameraman, do your job. And she says, a baddie is a beautiful woman with confidence that knows herself. She says, thankfully, uh, uh, she, I can't say this. To, I can say this to all the slobs. Wait, what is this here in your notes? She, said, she, knows she, she says that know themselves. So thankfully, I can say here to all you slobs in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, then yeah she's running down like the Boston crowd while saying, yeah, hey, yeah. these baddies right here yeah. are not part of you. Yeah. yeah. And then Mark says, yeah, it was difficult to find good-looking people in Boston. She says, but Jade was able to do it. She says, but Marina Shafir isn't allowed in the baddie section. Jade calls her trash. Uh, she said they should address her as number 30. She says she's tired of all these MMA losers coming on her show. Uh, and then Sterling says, you know, I was concerned about Marina Shafir's fighting background and that she calls herself the problem. Jade says, thankfully, I'm the problem solver. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, after that, we got an MJF Sean Spears interview. Spears tells uh, Wardlow, hey, you're pissing up the wrong tree. It almost seems like he's ready to challenge Wardlow to a match or something. And MJF mm-hmm. cuts him off and says, I hope, Wardlow, you show up next week because it would be twice the security, twice the pain. And then he challenges Sean Dean to a match next week. I feel like MJF is going about this all the right way. Like he should try to, he should try. Why doesn't he just sue the shit out of Wardlow for breach of contract? Because then he could just make him go broke. You know? I know. Anyways, after that, you got a butcher in the, and plus on top of that, he's not going to be showing up to the arena because he's too busy dealing with lawyers and paperwork exactly. And you discovery stuff. Just bury him under a pile of paperwork. Exactly. Litigate. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, we had that's far more compelling than wrestling. <laughs> we had a uh, very confusing butcher in the blade, but uh, butcher, of course, uh, also sunburnt. That's why I think that's why he was wearing a shirt. Oh, it could be. <laughs> but oh, when Matt was Hardy like, was giving those chair shots to his back, I felt so bad for him. This really had to stink. Oh man, I know. I can't. Matt Jackson has to be just like just get a whole vat of aloe vera. For his for his torso there. Yeah. Uh so anyway, so this match was a tag team tables match. So like Elimination each member, Elimination. Elimination. Sorry, elimination. Each member has to go through a table and then they're eliminated, and whoever like first team to have both people eliminated, they lose. Correct. Yeah. So like uh early on, like Butcher and Blade suplex Jeff through a table. But it's well, more on the table. And it the was table more collapses. on the table because only one leg is up. Yeah, and he hits kind of the bottom part of it, and so he doesn't go through it. The bottom just kind of bends a little bit, I and think so the match the, carries on. Yeah, and so I don't think I, anything of it. And they come back from commercial, and they say that Jeff had been eliminated. I'm like, where? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know the the spirit is you know this thing they, they probably inspected it. Oh yeah, there's some breakage here, and Jeff caused that breakage via offensive maneuver from the opposite team out he's a yeah it's not like 2k where you can accidentally go through a table and the match suddenly comes to an abrupt end mm-hmm. somebody has to you know do an, a, a move to you through it um and then uh so anyways uh let's see here what is this uh somebody gets eliminated Blade oh gets yeah eliminated butcher next. butcher gets butcher gets eliminated next the oh, match, butcher gets the, eliminated next. Uh, hits a top rope leg drop puts him through a right. table but he doesn't leave either. So both Jeff and Butcher are still kind of hanging around ringside. They're still basically in this match. Pretty much. Point. I mean, Jeff is the one who eliminates the Blade. Yeah. So Butcher and Blade, they suplex Matt over the barricade, that but they had like placed a table there. That looked like that it, looked sucks, like it so really bad. sucked. Yeah. They had put a table there, and, like, the camera guy didn't wide out or anything because, like, they just end up – they suplex him over. The table's mysteriously gone. Mm-hmm. And then eventually he goes over, and you see Jeff over there. He had yanked the table out of mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then in the end, yeah, Jeff goes up, like, super high on top of a, a, a ladder and then does a, an insane swanton yeah. through the blade on a table and breaks through it. And it's just uh, – oh, God. It, it was rough. He looks rough. like Jeff just walks like around like he's so miserable because he's probably hurts when he does stuff like this. Yeah, I know. And it, it's, you know, it's entertaining. But, man, they, they could dial it back a little bit. Little catch bit is different. catch can, Jeff Hardy. Try yeah. that for a bit. Give us some hour-long uh, catch wrestling bouts. Yes, great mm-hmm. idea. So Andrade and the AFO come out to the ramp. They're staying on the ramp, trying to walk, starting to walk down. Sting's music hits. He comes out. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, takes out Private Party with his bat, and he t- steps up to Andrade, and then the bunny steps in front of him. Mm-hmm. And so he kind of uses Bunny as a shield to walk around Sting and leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had a Jurassic Express promo. Uh, Christian Cage shows up. He's just pissed that he lost, throws water water bottle and leaves. Hold on. He shouldn't be pissed that he lost. He should be happy that he learned. Right? Right, yeah. It, there's no, yeah, there's no downside to a match. You either win, that's good, or you learn something from this. Maybe right, what too. he learned is that he shouldn't be on TV anymore. He should be on one of those YouTube shows they do, Darker oh, Elevation. So that's 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 probably a, a tough pill to swallow. Just buried within two hours, two and a half hours of jobber matches. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be tough. You know, someone's just, got a Hall of, Bank, Hall of Fame caliber resume. Just because you're learning doesn't mean you like what you're learning. Oh, no, you know? I understand. It's like when I learned how bad donuts are for you, that's not something I want to celebrate. At the That's age true. of 43. You know? Anyway, so Jungle Boy is, is uh, talking about how Red Dragon are tough. They've been champs all around the world. But here, things are determined by record. Sorry, you don't have enough wins to challenge for these titles. But we'll challenge you and put the titles on the line. So that's happening Wednesday. Next hey, Wednesday. Redragon. Three weeks on Dark and Elevation. Right back up the rankings. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had a Nyla Rose Vicky uh, Aguero promo where uh, uh, she challenges Thunder Rosa. For uh, Battle of the Belts. I honestly just caught the very, very end of this. Yeah. So I don't know any, what, any, what anybody said. I just saw the card I mean, at the end, or the very end of the promo and the card that says there, the match at Battle of the Belts. I think Thunder Rosa at the end said, hey, you want a piece of this? You got me at Battle of the Belts. And they gotcha. said, oh, coming up at Battle of the Belts. Ghoul. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. After that, we had a, a Jamie Hayter and St- a Tony Storm interview because they're facing off for the, uh, well, uh, no, they're just going to face off. Uh, they said they, might, they like, might face off. Yeah, they said that's a possibility. Social uh, media's are going to at this point. Which means they, that's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, they have to do that. So Tony's like, oh, you shake my hand. And then Jamie's like, nope. She says, I hope we face off in the tournament. She says, all your star power that you brought here to this company ends because of me. She says, if anybody deserves to win, it's me, Jamie Hayter. And then t- Tony says, it's only just begun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had another Owen Hart tournament qualifying match, Julia Hart versus Hikaru Shida. I haven't noticed this before, but I definitely noticed it tonight. He does the the eye makeup that Julia Hart has kind of peeking out underneath her eye patch now. Only because you would text that to me in the Enforcer. Yeah. I did not notice that at all. Yeah, yeah. very Malachi-esque. Yeah, I did notice that she sent the Pillmans go- away. Yeah. Like, what what's this like before the match even started, I think, wasn't it? It was, yes. Or right at the very yeah, beginning, because she, she kicks yeah. Sheeta in her back during her entrance that chokes her with yeah. her varsity yeah, jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the yeah. Pillmans are all like, hey, Julia, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and then she she's says, like, get out of here. You're out of here. You can tell <laughs> yeah. the rest to kick them out. Yeah, man. Get out of here, scumbags. Uh, so anyways, uh, it's a fun match though. I like that Julia was, was, was was wrestling kind of heelish, sticking, gouging her fingers and, uh, she desires to break holds and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, she was. Um, yeah, at some point house of black is going to go around to recruiting her for reals. Mm -hmm. This Mm -hmm. has been a story they've been telling for like six months now. They they really need to get a move on. It's going to pay off. Uh, Hey man, long-term storytelling. Appreciate it. Now is better. Uh, anyways, you want long term storytelling, but you want it now, now, now. I would like it now, please. Uh, I don't like reading those long books, man. I just want like a little, that's why I like comic books. They're really short, you know. Graphic so in novels, high school, mm-hmm. you didn't in high school you didn't read the books. You did the cliff notes, huh? I I I think I did that once in college. Hmm. I think I only got the cliff notes once in college because I was like, man, I I have been messing around too much. I need to get this assignment done. Go get the Cliff's notes. Oh, this is what happens. Okay. We didn't have Wikipedia back then. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Not at all. Anyway, uh, Sheeta gets the win here with the yeah. Falcon Arrow and a spinning knee before that. And then Serena Deeb's music hits. So Sheeta grabs her kendo stick and she goes and she looks at the ramp, but then she, her spider sense tingles and she turns around and Deeb's about to attack her with a chair and they face off. And then uh, and then Deeb just, you know, she seethes mm-hmm. and then leaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Deeb seethes. Deep seeds. Then we got our main event. 
Young Bucks versus FTR. Whoa, you got this Swerve Strickland interview here that you oh, wrote sorry, all these notes bad. for. Yeah. Sorry, Swerve. This uh, was yeah. this was actually a really cool spot. At first, it was really cheesy. So he's outside, uh, like the the dude's locker room, and uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, what's that dude's name? The guy that Jericho Marvez. calls like Fathead. Yeah, Marvez. Um, he's interviewing him. And Strickland's like, oh, yeah, I went to the Grammys. I had some pictures up, too. So I went to the Grammys in Vegas. They were great. He says, but, you know, the week didn't start great. Me and Lee, Keith Lee, not Keith Lee, Keith Lee got put through tables. He says, but it's not over with Starks and Hobbs. He says, but right now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get ready. And then he goes into a locker room. And then Hobbs and Starks just run through behind him. And Marvez says to the cameraman, follow them. Not like get help, but follow them. Yeah, and so they're attacking uh, Swerve. Keith Lee comes out of nowhere. He makes a save, but Lee uh, uh, Hobbs sort of gets the better of Lee at first, and then Strickland is beaten up. Ricky Starks, and then Lee comes out of nowhere and pounces Hobbs through the wall. It was awesome. And they're yes, I'm great. aware they just set this up with some flimsy. They just put some uh, sheetrock uh, up there or something. Yeah, sheetrock. Yeah, but it was really cool. And then you hear somebody else on the other side. What's going on? It's pretty funny. It's pretty great. It's pretty awesome. Then we had our main event. Then we had our main event. Young Bucks versus FTR. Uh, FTR, full face mode. Young Bucks, super heels, throwing their jackets at FTR before the match starts. And FTR is like literally schooling the Young Bucks to start. Young Bucks have mm-hmm. no answer for anything yeah. uh, FTR is doing. Uh, at, the, at one point, a hockey fight breaks out. Cash is sent out of the ring. Uh, Young Bucks hits double drop kicks on Dax and then on Cash. Uh, eventually, though, uh, FTR locks each member of the Young Bucks into a sharpshooter. Nick sticks his fingers in Cash's eye to break it up. From that moment on, for a good stretch, the Young Bucks take control. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, though, man, there's just so much stuff going on. I'm not going to go through all the moves because this is just, one of those matches. Yeah. It's one of those, but it's fantastic. Yeah. So just watch. Yeah. So down towards the end, FTR is looking for Shatter Machine. Uh, young Bucks block that. Nick distracts the ref. And so Matt kicks Cash in the front area. And what did Cash say, Steve? Ah! My dick! Yeah. Uh, Bucks then hit a shatter machine. That gets him a two count. Young Bucks hit more bang for your buck. That gets a two. Matt tells Nick, go get a title. So he fetches the Ring of Honor title. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Dax sees that. He and Nick are playing tug of war with it. Eventually, though, Nick gets gets the belt. Blast Cash with the title. He gets pinned. Dax breaks that up. Uh, the Young Bucks hit stereo super kicks on Dax. They're looking for a BTE trigger on Cash. They hit it. Cash puts his foot in the rope. Uh, referee Rick Knox only notices it after he counts the three, so he calls off the pin. Calling it off. Didn't happen. The Young Bucks are already celebrating. They're already playing their music. It's fiction. Rick Knox calls it off. So the Young Bucks are looking for a Meltzer driver. Uh, Dax comes in, catches Nick, when he does the flip off the ropes, hits him with a power bomb. Cash tombstones Nick. And then FTR hits a BTE trigger and then Shatter Machine to get the win. Spectacular bout. Go out of your way to watch it. Awesome, 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 awesome stuff. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and answer some questions. I've got a thread right here on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. We've got a bunch of reward tiers over there, including $5 a month. Gets you access to all of our bonus episodes and the weekly Kip Up newsletter. Drops every Friday, assuming we got our shit together. This week it dropped a little bit later because of WrestleMania shenanigans, but typically every Friday, the Kip Up. It helps keep up with wrestling, man. If you can't watch all the wrestling that's going on, if you can't watch every episode of Going In or or whatever, uh, you can sit there while you're dropping a deuce, perhaps, and you got your phone on, and then you just read about everything that happened in wrestling for the week, so you're all caught up. So when you're going to those parties where everybody's talking about wrestling, you know what you're talking about. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. There are no parties where people are talking about wrestling. I made it up. (laughs) Uh, First up, Soak and Roast. Should Samoa Joe join the Blackpool Clobbering Club? No, he should take them all out. No, join them. He should establish dominance, victorate on them, and then then take over. Join them. Called the Samoan Combat Club. Oh, it'd be so great if you joined them. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Planet Houston, who's had better matches, more interesting list of opponents since returning. This isn't even close in my book. Edge or Christian? It's Edge. Christian's had uh, the program with Kenny, which was really good. He's had some solid bouts. 
Edge had that long feud with with Seth that was really good. Yeah, that was good. He made a event at WrestleMania with Brian Danielson and Roman Reigns. Yeah, sure, he, he did got get stacked, he got stacked. <laughs> but that was a good <laughs> match. Got, yeah, his one on one match Impact against uh, his one on one match, uh, Edge's one on one match against uh, Roman at Money in the Bank was really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we're just talking match quality. I think Chris or sorry, Edge wins handily. I want to take a look. Let's see here. Uh, trying to find any friggin' there we go. Nope. Okay, Christian Cage defeats Ace Austin. Kenny Omega defeats Christian Cage. Uh, Christian Cage versus Brian Myers. Uh, the Blade, Matt Hardy, and Helico. Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Hobbs, Frankie Kazarian. Yeah, that's sort of a sort of a far cry from uh, what Edge has been doing. Edge has been he's been he's been in the biggest spotlight, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, next up, uh, Matt and Caleb Graham. Would you send the acclaimed to Ring of Honor to build the tag team division? They're kind of an interesting spot where it doesn't really seem like they're. It's going to be another year or so before those guys could conceivably, I think, vie for those AEW tag titles. Yeah, but at the same time, though, I feel like they're getting pretty over. They are getting over that yeah. where it feels like if they were to go to Ring of Honor, I don't know how they're going to arrange Ring of Honor within the greater AEW universe. But assuming Ring of Honor isn't on a primetime cable spot, mm-hmm. it'll seem like a step down potentially. I agree. I think there's like, I think they're like right at the line where like, you're right. They're over in AEW kind of mm-hmm. big time. And below them is like, top flight who are also over but i say send them to ring of honor because i feel like they still could use the character stuff Mm -hmm. but like the acclaim to have the character stuff they're wildly over yeah and uh and you know they're 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 really good wrestlers just they're not at the point yet because of how loaded AEW is with their tag teams they're not on the upper echelon i mean Mm -hmm. they were ranked number one they had the title shot or they had the title they have they have they're they're consistently ranked in the top five yeah the acclaim yeah i i I agree keep them out of ring of honor yeah uh, let's see here. Um, Cameron brought a lot. So which stairs do you prefer? AEW's one piece stairs or WWE's oh, two steps. piece stairs? Ring steps. Yeah, the ring steps. Yeah. Um, oh, the two piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you can take the top part off and like throw it in the ring, do stuff in there with it. Yeah. No. I'm more agree. portable. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, Enforcer asks, would you consider the Jericho Appreciation Society Kingston uh, XLAX segment tonight a car prank? I'd be a car prank would have been if it came through your wall. Yeah, like a meatloaf video. Or if Eddie had yeah, thrown the TV through the back of the, the SUV. Yeah, right. Yeah. That would be considered a car prank, but just them getting in and driving off. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that's... Yeah. I don't know. I, I personally wouldn't consider that a, a car prank. This is a great question. Steve Klein, if you were to get a wrestling-inspired back tattoo, what would you get? Wow. Yeah. I would get like... Like something old school, like a uh, Hack and Schmidt versus Gotch, like piece where like you have the entire like all the crowd there, and they're going at it. But then you know, I'd give like a, one guy would have a gun in his hand. <laughs> okay, I would just alter history a little bit. What I would like, do- yeah, you remember this infamous match where Gotch brought a gun? Yeah. What I'd do is I wouldn't just keep it on my back. It'd be my whole upper body, and it'd be chest man ring gear. <laughs> Damn it! I put chess man where the slammy is. It's right there where my yeah. finger is. Is his head? Yeah, that's chess man. So he's right there. Yeah, that's, that's what good. I would do. Okay, I like uh, that. <laughs> Miku. Which man. title should Joe win first? Is there a way you can have like a winner takes all the titles and then he just does Ultimo Dragon, Ultimate J- J- Drag Joe, Joe, Ulta Joe Dragon? I mean, any like of all them. Of them. Yeah, all of them. Any of them. The world title. Yeah, AEW world title. Like, honestly, it's a world title. That should happen next week. Uh, Roz Cody says, Cody has had a big year, a five-star match against Sammy. In the Mania match, Cody went from being a losing mid-card title, from losing a mid-card title to beating Seth, one of the best wrestlers in WWE. What do you do in kayfabe to level up? Oh, man. Uh, got older. Yeah. He got older. Because in wrestling, the older you get, the better you are. 
Yeah. Yep. That's, that. that's canon in WWE, in WWE uh, universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just, he got older. You go back, he went to WWE after six years. Dude, six years is a long time. That's a lot of leveling up right there. Yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. Anyways, that's going to do it for us. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. We'll be back tomorrow at noon Pacific for our NXT UK watch along. And then later on at five Pacific for the Smash Zone, where we're going to press your luck. Must go. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.